for Christmas, I finally got a PlayStation Vita, and one of the main reasons I got uh, the PlayStation Vita was so I could play uh, the exclusive uh, Silent Hill Book of Memories, which hasn't been uh, super exciting, uh, but if, if I ever finish it, I'll uh, record a better uh, developer diary about that game, or I suppose if I ever give up on it either, um, be a good time to record it as well. But uh, what I'd like to talk about is uh, Gravity Rush, which um, is, a, is another game I was really excited about to try on the Vita. And while it's not a horror game, it at least has some ties to horror because the game director uh, worked on the original Silent Hill and then the Siren series and then did Gravity Rush. And uh, it definitely doesn't have a horror feel to it, but I thought it would be interesting to talk about, um, uh, because it does some things really well. Uh, firstly, uh, the gameplay is, it's interesting, but it seems like it, it's just a, a little rough around the edges. Uh, after, uh, playing through the game, I, um, I, I never really got the hang of, of the the gameplay there are a number of frustrating platform elements and I don't know maybe I messed up my upgrade path or something like that because uh, there's uh, sort of an open world thing and then you, you can do side missions to level up your character and I don't know maybe I failed too many of those or something but um, uh, it, it's still a really neat idea basically you can just change the direction of gravity so you can essentially throw your character like completely across the world and walk on buildings and do all sorts of neat things like that and, and so they have uh, you know platforming challenges based around that and, and navigating through the world and then combat is a little weird you can throw yourself at enemies with a gravity shift and, and do like a super kick uh, sometimes it doesn't work quite, quite right, and, and the enemies are only vulnerable in, in one spot, uh, or in, in a few spots that have these big glowing orbs, so the, the combat was my, my least favorite aspect of the, the game. Um, I almost wish that it had a little more sort of adventure game, uh, elements, because I think... Uh, my favorite part about the game was the the world. Um, they they had the art style is really good. Uh, the character is is cell shaded with like a little rim shader um, that that looks pretty darn cool. And and they have these these really neat uh, comic uh, cutscenes. Um, but the the cool part about them is that you can move the Vita and it will rotate uh, the elements as because basically they're composed of you know set layers in in 3D space and you're essentially moving the camera so it it's kind of a neat um, 3D look to the cutscenes and and I liked the the character of Cat um, it's kind of funny she's kind of bumbling and and. Uh, uh, a little boy crazy, and, and, uh, I don't know, all, all in all, I thought, um, you know, the, 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 the characters were, were funny and charming in their own sort of way, um, but, the, unfortunately, the, the story didn't really seem to go anywhere, like, uh, they, they raised a ton of questions, and I, at least, may, maybe I didn't get it, I don't know, maybe there's some secret ending, but I, uh, don't have much of a better idea of what happened, uh, with the story than, than when I began the game, and so maybe, maybe I missed something, though, but, uh, I think that could have been improved a bit, but the, the thing that I really liked about it, and the thing that, um, is most, uh, notable, at least to me, for the purposes of these, uh, developer diaries, is just how, uh, well, they crafted the world. Um, the the world is really um, well done. Like I I felt like um, I mean it it was kind of immersive in its own way, and and I, it's it's tough to quite uh, put my finger on it. Uh, what makes it so effective? But um, 
I'm, I'm kind of reminded of Panzer Dragoon, which, um, you know, is my favorite game series, and I really love the, the world, and I really get lost in it, and, and, and this game sort of, uh, felt, uh, similar in some respects, um, so, uh, I don't, I don't know exactly what it is, they have this sort of interesting, um, kind of futuristic kind of steampunk, uh, society, and it, may, maybe they just didn't dub it into English, but it sounded like they were sort of made up their own language, uh, which I think is, is, is really neat, and, and, uh, something else, uh, Panzer Dragoon did, um, but, uh, I, and and I, I wish the the actual gameplay leveraged that world a bit more. Um, like one of the most enjoyable things was sort of throwing yourself around the the uh, overworld um, and and just you know looking at the buildings and um, seeing how cool it would be to walk on walls over here and jump up and and they did a really good job of like constructing this these crazy sort of vertical cities that lent themselves well to this sort of play because there were like basements and sewers and you could throw yourself out of these weird floating islands and and then throw yourself around the, the border to, to get up and and uh, there's definitely some things where you you needed to do that but a lot of um a lot of it felt um like, uh, I mean, they, they, there wasn't too much to do on the overworld. You can get from point A to point B and do side missions, and there's a few sort of coins here and there, whatever they're called, but, I mean, the equivalent of, like, Mario coins, uh, that you can, you know, try and find in the overworld, but, uh, overall, you know, mostly I was just, you know, using it for, for some of the challenge missions, which are, I usually sort of like races or, or combat things, and I always failed the combat things. Um, but the races, you know, again, you're just have a mostly linear path you're trying to propel yourself through, whereas, um, you know, and sometimes you have to go on the ceiling. But o overall, I, I felt like this was a world that I, I'd like to explore. I'd like to do, you know, be motivated to explore by the by the actual game mechanics, but, I mean, they did a really good job, and, and, um, one of the, the, the really impressive things is that, um, they, they have a, um, basically the world split up into different districts, and as you progress through the world, you go to the different districts, which um, is a common way to, to structure a game, but the interesting thing is their, their streaming world, uh, will allow you to um, just throw yourself across an expanse of space until you get to the other world. Um, so you can just change gravity to sideways and woo, you know, go the mile or whatever to, to the next world. Um, which I thought was, was really cool um, because, I mean, they have a train system and you figure the reason they have the train system is just so that they can load in the extra data when you're on the train or, you know, when the screen's black, but, uh, you can actually just throw yourself, um, over, which I think, uh, is, is a really, uh, that's a really good thing, really well done. Um, and, and I mean, I don't know, I think it's details like that that really help the world, uh, feel richer and, and, um, you know, maybe, maybe they don't pay off, uh, to, uh, everyone, uh, maybe they don't, um, maybe they're not worth the effort, because certainly, you know, creating a, str a streaming world is, is harder than not, uh, having, having, you know, having static loads and load screens, uh, but I mean, certainly I think for, for Never Ending Nightmares, it was definitely worth, uh, streaming everything, and, and, and certainly I think that helps, uh, helped, uh, Gravity Rush, um, and, uh, you know, I think, I think another aspect, and, and I touched on this more for the character, but I think the art design was, was really well done, um, across the, the entire game, um, uh, 
and I and I think that helped really build the world. And and if you look at it, it it's almost like sort of a lot of it is sort of that desaturated brown and you know just uh, you know not really rich colors. Um, you know, that you see in a lot of uh, next-gen titles, you know, Gears of War, gritty, realistic shooter, or whatever, but I think they combined it well um, with the the colorful aspects of the world, so I thought it was really cool, and it, if you have a PlayStation Vita, uh, it's definitely worth checking out, so thanks for watching.